she's a skinny lady. Oh, but she's been spayed. She has been spayed. Okay. You Goodbye. see how her ear is cut? Oh, yep. that means Fine. Daddy. More chill. pets, please. More pets. Thank you. So, like, why'd you stop? Oh no, she's. Oh, that's like not good, right? What? Uh, injury? Where? Oh, uh, okay. Ooh. Oh, maybe you had some fun last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's <laughs> okay. Alright. Peace Bye. out. Bye, Let's go. You want to be interviewed? What do you think of the Israel post? <laughs> What's your take? Yeah. What'd you think? How'd it go? Yeah, fine. Yeah? yeah. What's up? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> what about you? I've been brought back from the brink a little bit. Alright. That was my pro-Palestinian infusion. Truth and narrative saving. It's all about balance diet. It's all about balance. And then tomorrow, Almert will give us the ultimately combined perspective. So who's Almert? Um, Almert was a prime minister in Israel, which is like their leader, basically. Um, I think he came into power temporarily in 2005, I think, when Sharon had a stroke. And then I think he was elected prime minister or made prime minister by the Knesset or whatever his party, his coalition, in um, I think 2006. And then in 2008, he was behind what was arguably going to be a really big peace deal between him and the Palestinians, with him and Abbas, but for reasons it fell through. Different people claim different things. I think Abbas says he was never given a formal agreement to say no to. Um, Olmert says that he had to resign because he was fearing indictments from uh, corruption charges, basically. We're not going to get into that, but yeah. But Olmert will be interesting because uh, he was working directly with Abbas and he felt like or at least he says he was on the precipice of a peace deal, so... Is he more on the conservative side, then? Um, the the, all the parties blend together for me. Uh, let's see, Olmert? Olmert wouldn't have been considered... He would have been considered on the conservative side, right? Uh, he was, and then he went center. And then he went center? Yeah. Do you know what party he was? After... Likud and then Kadima. Okay, Likud and then Kadima. Kadima is a party, right? That's not like a coalition of parties, is it? Okay, all right. Is this the one that required, like, the extra security checks and everything? The extra security checks for what? Uh, for, for you to interview and, like, bring... Yeah. Oh, um, I don't remember. Probably one of them, though, because he's an ex-prime minister, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's awkward. Jesus. I think, I'm not sure yet, but I part. Can you not talk to us since we already said goodbye? Well, I can put it. I have to intercept you on the way, like, I'm in Dome and shit. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay, you want to trade? Uh, sure. Thanks. You can suntan with that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Nice. She's carrying around. So, Lena didn't even Stop. pack any oh suitcases. Oh, my God. All she brought was this suntanner carry on. And then the cheeseburger. Yeah. Uh, well. No, no. Well. Yeah. Yeah, let it. No, good. No pickles. Fuck, bro. Yeah, let us tomatoes, okay. You guys have. Well, can I ask for bacon or is that like. Uh, I don't think they have bacon. I don't have bacon. They're on the lounge. Like, Okay, no, that's okay. You can. Uh, um, the root beer? Huh? Root beer? Yeah. Okay, cola? Uh, Coke? Coca-Cola? Right now, we have... Uh, okay. Coca-Cola? Okay. Okay. Tel Aviv? Uh, for the fan meetup?
Was it in Jaffa or Tel Aviv? Okay. It's like the super strong one. Tel Aviv Promenade. Yeah. Promenade. Okay. I think that's a good landmark. I don't know. I don't do a kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a challenge. Like the stairs, oh, it's like green tea or something. We'll get the drinks around like in many places. What? Oh. So we don't have any room for the fish. We can't like hold that fish. So you feel like a monster, like, monster for you won't have coffee? Yeah. Is it for the. You know what Tel Aviv means in English? Fuck you. What? What does it mean? I told you that yesterday. You <laughs> means spring. They had a new life. And I'm not. I Thank you. You're the first person not to know any like curse words. I'm the first person to what? To not ask for any curse words. Oh. Just got water. I feel like so. It's like so. Yeah. Like I said, I have nothing. I'm so detached from this language. Yeah. It's so hard. Yes. Also, why would you need curse words? Well, that's what everyone asks for. No one needs anything else. I have all the English slurs. That is true. Old band? Yeah. We're, um, you feel like you learned anything from the uh, conversation? Like, you feel like it was productive, good? Um, yeah, I didn't know, um, I didn't know there was much of a thing about people complaining that also was a interim period rather than just doing it quickly. Oh, yeah, that was a really big thing that, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I don't know if I'm just a fucking retard or if Betty Morris wrote it really badly, but I swear I read that any government person talking to PLO was not legal at that time. The law did change by Oslo to make it official, but yeah, I was pretty sure that I'll have to read it back. Because I feel like I've read that chapter like four times. It sounds very much like there was a six year law that prohibited government from speaking to PLO. But maybe it was just because it was unofficial, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. One of the guys I spoke to was the PLO finance minister. He definitely was talking to them. But... I mean, it's probably just because it was like an official, unofficial thing. But I think that came right at the beginning. And then I just got, I don't know, I just fucked with me. Like, I'm just coming, you? I was like, I've just come into your house and accused you of being a criminal. Oh. <laughs> and you're fucking mad at me for it, like, shit. Yeah. And that's all I was thinking about the rest of the fucking talk. I don't think it was mad. Uh, we was, uh, I don't like making mistakes like that.